Hi there. Th thank you so much for creating this wonderful platform and for um, inviting me to to speak today. It really is a privilege. Um, and th thank you for the, the wonderful introduction. So today I I chose to speak on the topic leading change as an entrepreneur. And I'm particularly interested in speaking to those of you who have some interest in an entrepreneurial career path. And I want to share my, my lessons um, in entrepreneurship, in the journey um, that I've walked so far, and pass that on to, um, to, to women who, young women who are, who are thinking of pursuing an, an entrepreneurial path. Um, so I own a company called, um, called Codespace, which is an education institution. And we specialize in teaching coding and teaching software development. We're a tech-enabled education institution um, with our in-house dev team creating ed tech products that, that power our learning environments. And since I was young, I've had a fire burning inside me, a God-given passion for education. And I truly believe that the quality of a person's education determines their personal freedom. I want young people on this continent to have world-class education that lets them play on a global stage. And in my lifetime, I want to see non-segregated learning environments, which we still haven't seen in, in post-apartheid South Africa. And entrepreneurship for me has been a way of directly being able to influence the world around me. Um, and that's really the, the motivating factor for me. It enthralls me about being an entrepreneur, the fact that I can create a product and through that product, um, I can directly influence someone's life. And so I'm speaking to the, the crazy ones who are equally as enthralled by that notion. It's definitely not a path for everyone. Um, but I want to see a generation of um, young women standing up and saying, this is, this is something that, that I want to do. Um, as a person, I am incredibly driven by the ability to influence the world around me. And I really value my, my autonomy, um, the ability to align my actions with my values. Um, and I thrive in a learning environment. I thrive on the ability to every day be able to update my knowledge about how, how the world works. And so I think it's those personal values that really make me thrive as an entrepreneur. Um, and my advice always when someone wants to um, sort of pursue an entrepreneurial route is that, you know, check, check your motives, check that this is, is the right thing for you. Not everyone has to be an entrepreneur. Um, there are many, many ways that we can influence the world and entrepreneurship is, is only for a certain breed of crazy. Um, and as an aspiring or early stage entrepreneur, it's absolutely crucial to become deeply, deeply committed to knowing yourself and understanding what drives you. Um, and that, that, that's a process that's, that's ongoing. Um, and so I would definitely advise any aspiring and early stage entrepreneurs to um, carve out the space and really, really um, dedicate oneself to to, to knowing oneself. Um, entrepreneurship requires incredible focus and perseverance. Um, and your goal is to create real value in the world. Your goal is to create um, something um, that someone wants to use, to create a product that someone's going to integrate into their life. And through that, you're creating value for them and that, that success. Um, and my, warning would be don't be distracted from this true goal by false metrics there's a lot of noise in the world um don't judge your value by investment rounds don't judge your value by pr hype um don't let these things become your goal they're not they're not the goal the goal is um to be able to have someone use what 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 you've created them and chase, chasing false goals will lead you chasing investment rounds chasing pr hype that's both of those lead you to become someone else's story. Um, but as an entrepreneur, you are able to decide your own story. You're able to create your own metrics and you should create your own metrics and judge yourself only by those metrics. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the very, very first thing is, um, the, and the most important step in becoming a successful entrepreneur is to start. <laughs> um, the, the simplest 
advice that is the hardest thing to do. Um, we've heard the adage, don't let perfect get in the way of starting, but it is, it is true. Um, if you have dreams of being a startup founder, but you've never sold anything, find anything, something to, to start with. It doesn't have to be glorious. Um, make biscuits, um, sell, sell them as a profit, find, find some way of um, generating revenue. And there's, there's so much to learn. Um, it doesn't have to be the first thing that you sell doesn't have to be your, the pinnacle of your, of your career. Um, in fact, actually, the simpler it is, the better. It lets you learn all of the, the lessons around, um, around running a business. Um, and when one does sort of settle on an, um, so something that one wants to be able to bring to the world and an entrepreneurial venture, um, I have a very sort of unsexy, unglorious um, piece of advice. No, you're not waiting um, for, for your first investor. A really good way of, of enabling yourself to start is to find a way um, to pay your bills. Um, it's a really good idea to be able to work for, you know, whether it's 10 or 20 hours a week um, to cover your basic living expenses without relying on your business's revenue to be able to do that. Um, in time, yes, of course, revenue from your, from your venture needs to be able to um, pay you. But when you're starting out, being able to um, pay your bills and give yourself that, that headspace is really, really um, important. When I started out, I was able to, I build sort of between 10 and 20 hours a week. Um, and that gave me the ability to, um, to rest easy. It also gave me headspace. Um, being able to step away from my, my baby and simply do something um, that I was, was good at, I could create value, it was someone else's problem. I was just doing what I was told. Um, was really, really helpful. Um, and of course, the converse side to, um, you know, covering your, your basic living expenses is to be absolutely vigilant in keeping those basic living expenses as low as possible. The advice gets less and less sexy as I'm going. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, the um, the crucial thing is that that courage to start, um, and it's practical. Um, it's it's not glorious that moment when you start. Um, so there needs to be that tension between knowing this vi this vision um, of of where you want to go. So you know, every step of the way, I've been driven by this this passion that I have for recreating. Um, ed education for reimagining educational spaces. I um, I started school as you know as apartheid was ending, and I, I really had the most privileged um, education experience. Um, and I had I have ideas for how education um, needs to change in this country, for for how we are we're able to offer really truly high class global education um, to young people on this continent that gives them the freedom to be able to um, co contribute at a global level. Um, and it's that vision, that driving passion that then has to take me through every small step as an entrepreneur. Um, and lastly, I wanted to to speak briefly about being a woman in leadership specifically. Um, the, the rules of business are, um, they're written by men and they're written for men. Um, th there's a vast minority, 6% um, of CEOs of JSE listed companies are women. That's 19 women out of 329, I think. Um, and the, the rules of business, the rules um, to win through, uh, the rules to win are through dominating the market, through crushing the competition. Um, these are, these are ways, ways of being, um, that, and many of us know inside us that there, there are other ways of winning. Um, and I, I believe that the, the true cause that we're here for, the true, true cause um, is to allow both this masculine approach to business as well as a different um, feminine approach to business to be valued. It's not about one 
conquering the other and removing. We're not arguing for feminine approach to business at the expense of the masculine approach to business, but the cause that we're standing for is to allow both of those and to allow leaders to be drawing on both of those um, leadership styles, to allow different ways of winning um, to, to be there. Our goal is um, not to learn to squash our femininity as leaders and win only by adopting hyper-masculine approaches. Um, our goal is to harness the femininity that comes so naturally to, to many women and find our authentic strength as leaders. Um, this is the this is the true cause that that I believe that um, I'm I'm here for, and so I would re really um, want to encourage young women who are wanting to um, go into business as entrepreneurs who have ideas in their in their the very core of their being for the change that they want to see, um, and I would I would so encourage you to to find the people who build up. Um, your feeling of strength, your feeling of courage, um, and to, to start to take that first inglorious, painful step, and then continue taking those small steps one after another. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you so much for for hosting me. Um, I, I encourage young entrepreneurs; you're more than welcome to to get in touch with me. Um, go for it.